faith versus the outpouring of the spirit. Hallelujah. It's also part of my faith series. So faith versus the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we all know that the spirit of the Lord didn't pour upon us today. Right from the beginning of time. In the days of the apostles and the prophets and the kings. There was the outpouring of God's spirit. And any time the spirit came upon people of old. The, 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 the outpouring brought, brings about a purpose. There was a reason why God pours out his spirit upon men. God anoints people. God empowers people for a reason. Every generation, every time in history, when the anointing, when the spirit of the Lord comes upon people, they, are, they, they perform a prodigy. They do something. It is targeted at a reason, a, a, a purpose. Hallelujah. And there is a saying that when you don't know the purpose of a thing, you abuse it. If you don't know the purpose of the outpouring of the spirit, you just misuse the outpouring. In the days of Samson, in Judges uh, 15, reading from 13 and 14, Judges, the Bible says something. The Bible said, and I read, and they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will not bind thee fast and deliver thee to their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. And the Bible said, and when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was bent with fire. And his bands loosed from off his hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then the Bible said, and he found a new jawbone of an ass, and he put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. It would take the supernatural hand of God for one man to kill 1,000 fighters or 1,000 soldiers. The cords, the ropes around him were bent like flags, and he took a jawbone and 1,000 men and look at what he said in the next verse. He said, and something said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. How was he able to do that? By the spirit that came mightily upon him. I see you receiving a mighty spirit. Say amen. So that you can do the impossible. So you can do something that naturally speaking, your nature and your well-being cannot do. It's about time you move from the natural into the supernatural. Hallelujah. And the Bible said in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 16, reading right from verse number 12, the Bible said, and he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy with, a, with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David mightily from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Hallelujah. As if God knew that David was going to meet a very big giant in 1 Samuel 17 who had threatened the livelihood and the entire nation of Israel. And the giant stood tall, almost 11 foot 9. And David was just 4 foot 6. But there was an outpouring of God's spirit upon him. Say amen. So when he saw the giant, he didn't see height. He didn't see stature. He saw himself bigger than the giant. When the spirit of God comes upon you, you look bigger than your problems. Say amen. When you have the mighty presence of God, you don't see the things around you at all. And so he took a stone in a sling and he brought down a giant who for 40 days had threatened the whole of Israel. And from that day, David led Israel into mighty battles and wars and won all of them. Why? 
because of the mighty outpouring of God's spirit. From today, receive that spirit. And may you never lose any battle in your life. Be he an emotional battle, financial battle, a demonic battle, anything that will rise up against you because of the outpouring of the spirit. May you overpower that thing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter number one, reading from verse four, uh, the book of Jeremiah, chapter one, verse four, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, uh, before I formed thee in thy belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Then the Bible said, but the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And the Bible said, Then the Lord put forth his hand. That's the outpouring. Then the Lord put off his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Hallelujah. Then he said, then says the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. So Jeremiah, though shy, very weak, very feeble, very intimidated, didn't see himself, the Lord ordained him as a prophet to the nations. And the Bible said, and he reached out his son and touched him. That is what his outpouring. He touched his man and said, I have said thee over the nation. Teach, preach, prophesy, declare my word, put down, destroy anything that is standing in the way of the Lord. And beloved, if you read the whole book of Jeremiah, you'll be amazed the exploits of the prophet Jeremiah. You who is sitting here, maybe you feel small, very weak, very shy, but today I declare the mighty hand of God is upon you. The Lord is touching your spirit, is touching your body, is touching your mind. Begin to do what you couldn't do before. Begin to speak God's word. Begin to declare. Begin to, begin to assert yourself. And let that spirit that has come upon you, let me also perform that which, is, which will be beyond your wildest imagination. Say, I receive it. And then when Jesus came, also, the Bible said, Jesus came, and then the prophecy of Isaiah was fulfilled uh, in him. And then the Bible says in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 4, verse 18, the Bible said, 4, 18, the Bible said, the spirit of the Lord God uh, is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Wow. To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. Hallelujah. Ah, look at the next verse. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This was the mission of Jesus. The spirit came upon him. To do what? To preach the gospel. To heal the sick. To recover the sight of, blind, of the blind. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So the spirit of the Lord came upon Jesus for a reason. He said, I came from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. Then he said to the disciples, as he was preaching, teaching, healing the sick, he said, when I die, I will resurrect. But when I resurrect, do not go anywhere until you have been endued with power from on high so that you will continue in my works. You will continue my activities so you will fulfill uh, the reason for which I came to complete the 
assignment. Hallelujah. The Bible said in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Acts 2, verse 1. I love Acts 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Wow. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And the Bible said, and there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. Wow. And they were all, say all. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues and, and as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. And there were also dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because they, that every man heard them speak in their own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not these men we speak Galileans how here how here we every man in his own tongue wherein we were born uh, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia in Judea Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome Jews and proselytes Cretes and Arabians do hear them speak our tongues, the wonderful works of God. Oh, hallelujah. Say amen. So when they received the outpouring, the Bible said they were all amazed and we that say that one to that. What meaneth this? What meaneth this? And the Bible said, uh, look at the next verse. Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. They were not full of new wine. They were they received the out the mighty outpouring. These were unleaded men. These were weak men. These were men who, when they came to arrest Jesus, they forsook him and fled. But when the mighty outpouring of the Lord came upon them, oh, they started doing the works of God. They started preaching. They started healing the sick, casting out devils, went to the temple and raised a man who was born crippled, went everywhere. If you read Acts chapter 5, verse 12, Acts 5, verse 12, the Bible says something. Uh, uh, and, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch and of the rest doth no man join himself to them but the people magnified them hallelujah and believers were more added to the Lord multitude both men and women hallelujah in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Hallelujah. Uh, the Bible said in the next verse, there came also multitude out of the cities, ran about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirit, and they were healed everyone. This was something that Peter and them could not do. But when the mighty outpouring of the spirit came upon them that they, they were so full of the presence so full of the power that the presence was transmitted also into their shadow and their shadow passing on sick people they were all healed that was the purpose of the mighty outpouring it gave them power over unclean spirits power over devil may you also experience the mighty outpouring of the spirit may you begin to heal the sick and cast out devils and do the wonderful works of the lord hallelujah are you there and the bible said something very very important in Acts chapter 2 17 to 21 i love the explanation there Acts 2 17 reading from 17 uh, verse 21 this was what the apostles, after the outpouring of the spirit that came upon them, they were saying that, look, we are not drunk with new wine. It is too early to be drunk. But this is the prophecy of Joel. That it shall come to pass in the last day, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. I command young men to see visions. 
and your old men shall dream dreams. I command old men to dream dreams. And on my servant and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. Hallelujah. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of and vapor of. Then shall the, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass. Everybody said it shall come to pass. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the mighty outpouring of the spirit was, was to save the world. Was to save mankind. Hallelujah. And brother, more souls were added to the church. More were converted. More were healed. Miracles. Mighty signs and wonders. And the Bible said in the book of Acts, chapter number 19, reading from verse 10. And the Bible said in verse 19 and 10. And this continued by the space of two years. So that they which dwell in Asia heard the word of the Lord. Uh, of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Hallelujah. Miracles, signs, and wonders. And by the space of two years, all who dwell in Asia have heard the gospel. What prophecy was the apostles talking about? The prophecy was in the mouth of the minor prophet Joel. In Joel chapter 2 verse 28, he prophesied hundreds of years before it came. And he said, and the prophecy of Joel, he gave so many prophecies. And at this point in time, he said, and it shall come to pass afterward. Afterward, that afterward, after the death of Jesus, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All, everybody say all. All including you, including your children, including the house boy, house girl, including kitchen girl, including the chef, including the driver, including the everybody who received the outpouring upon him. And it shall come to pass after that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. Young men shall see visions. Also upon the servant and upon the handmaid in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and the notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever during those days shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be delivered for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Hallelujah. So Joel, a minor prophet, prophesied that, that which was to come. So when there was the outpouring, the Holy Spirit reminded the apostle that this was the prophecy of Joel. This was that which was to come. This was that. So they stood on the precipice of prophecy. The fulfillment of prophecy. And they went out preaching, ministering, healing the sick, casting out devils. Hallelujah. And from that time till now is the outpouring of the spirit. So beloved, this is not the time for you to run around and, and begin to go to some weirdo places thinking that the spirit of God is in the north, in the south. It's within you. You have it. You have, you have received the outpouring. You can stand and speak. You can stand and pray. You can stand and prophesy. You can stand and minister. You can stand and lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You too, you can do it. Say, I receive it. You have received the outpouring of the spirit. Sometimes you feel that there is somebody... Some who, who shows man somewhere who can do some magic or something. Rather, sometimes it's the deception of the enemy to think that you don't have power. Ye, Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Ye shall receive exousia, spiritual dynamite. Ye shall receive power when the Holy Spirit is come upon thee. Say amen. You shall receive what? Explosive dynamite. Have you received the Holy Spirit? Have you, have you received the outpouring? The power is in you. 
When your child is sick, when your daughter is not well, when your son, lay your hands on your son. Lay your hands on your daughter. When you have frightening things, when you are sensing some demonic presence in your house, lift your two hands and plead the blood of Jesus and take authority. And take authority. Don't let the enemy put in your mind that it is so so and so hiding in some manfi mountain. Be somewhere who can do it for you. You have received the outpouring of the spirit. You can pray for yourself. You can pray for your husband. You can pray for your child. You can sanctify your bedroom. You can plead the blood of Jesus over your house. And the Bible said, nothing by any man shall hurt you. You have received the outpouring of the spirit. Say amen. The devil has succeeded in putting in our mind that there's a, a hidden prophet, short young prophet somewhere, who is more dangerous than you. Brother, you are also dangerous to danger. For the Lord is rich unto all who call upon him. For the Lord is what? Rich unto all who call upon him. Hallelujah. So you too, you can save others. You can minister salvation to others. You can witness. That is why we have the school of evangelism to now prepare you. This school is not for evangelism. This school is for everybody. Come and trade how to also manifest the reason of the outpouring of the Spirit. Preaching the gospel. Healing the sick. Casting out devils. When your pastor is not with you in Jowlu, in some place, in Kokrobite, Agbajena, Lagos town, Libya Cortez, you are somewhere, and there are souls there. Don't say, oh, I wish my pastor were here. Don't say that. Don't say, this girl is sick. Oh, I wish my pastor were here. My pastor would just ginger himself and cast her there. No, you are right there with the spirit of God. You are right there with the fullness of God's power. The power that he puts upon the pastor, he doesn't put less in you. It's the same power. Ah, the Bible says that ah, he who raised Christ from the dead, if the same spirit that was raised up Christ from the dead also dwelleth in you, then the same spirit shall also quicken your mortal body. So you also have the same access to the same power the pastor also has access to. It's no less. It is your faith. That is why it is faith versus the outpouring. Your faith your faith, the faith that is in you shall heal the sick, cast out devils, do the work, preach the gospel, lead people to Christ and bring them to church. Are you there? So you are also an evangelist. You are also a great woman of God. Sometimes you see... <laughs> When, when, when you don't know who you are, the enemy can deceive you and tell you that, huh, this time you can't handle it all. It is some special person somewhere. In Kumasi, beyond somewhere. It is not true. It is not true at all. God is not a fool to give all the power to some small boy being in Kumasi somewhere. No. God's spirit is everywhere. In your house, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, the power of God is available for you. Raise your hand and say, Father, I thank you that you have made your power available to me. So your faith, your faith in God must be strong to merit the outpouring. Is faith versus the art point. It means that you can do what the disciples did. He said to them, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. That you should go forth and bring forth more fruit. He said, he that believed in me, the works that I do, shall he do also. The works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than this shall he do. May you go out and do greater works. Say, I shall do greater works. Finally, my people, the Bible says something in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 10. For with the heart, 
man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jews and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all who call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How can the people believe on somebody they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And bring glad tidings of good things. Say amen. There are, look, our world has been saved. And there are more who are yet to be saved. Our world has become more ungodly than ever in the history of our world. Ungodliness has engulfed our world than ever. And the enemy has added the virus, the pandemic, COVID-19 to it so that we will take our eyes off the real purpose and the mission of the gospel. And now we are all scared and frightened and very, very, very confused and we are focusing only on the virus and we have left the work of God. May we be reminded that we still have souls to save. We still have souls to reach out to. We still have sick people to heal. We still have poor people to be taken care of. Don't let the enemy succeed in making us focus so much on the pandemic that we lose sight of why the outpouring of the Spirit came upon us. To make the church focus only inwardly. Your, your nice husband and your two beautiful girls. You don't want to go anywhere. You don't want to do anything. You do all that. Your name is coronavirus. 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 Coronavirus has filled your head. So you don't think about anything anymore. It's a strategy of the enemy. So I have come to remind the church. We have a greater mission ahead of us. We have a greater. We have souls to reach out to. And this pandemic. Brother God has already protected you against any virus and you are not dying anytime now you will come to your grave I prophesy to anybody that is listening to me and to your whole household that you will not die before your time you will come to your own grave when you have accomplished your mission on earth <laughs> hallelujah are you there? So I submit to all the CM family worldwide. I submit to all CM pastors and churches that come November 14th, 2020, we are out there at the Independence Square for the fifth anniversary of Day of Help. Reaching out to the cripple, to saving, to helping the poor and the sick, we will find a way. If it means we have to wear PPE, wear gloves, wear masks, we wear everything. But we must go out there and do the work of the ministry. Those in favor show by hand. Hallelujah. We have to find a way. It is risky. It is dangerous. But brother, that was the way the early church lived. The Bible said they loved not their lives even unto death. They preached the gospel through risky moments. They didn't have the kind of pandemic we have today. But their virus was the persecution the church went through. They were slaughtering them, killing them, burning them at the stake. They, were, they removed lions and sent the lions to eat them up. Those days, when you gave your life to Christ, you have signed your death warrant. It was a death sentence to be born again. 
My beloved, they love not their lives. They serve Jesus. They serve God. They work the works of God. They completed their mission. May we finish our missions. They are not going to allow the enemy to use the virus to chicken us out. And forget why the Lord gave the outpouring of the spirit in the last days. I encourage you to come with me. And let's prepare ourselves. We who are able, our jobs have been cut. Our salaries have been cut. Many have lost things. Many went, went, during this pandemic, many, many people have gone through. So if we who are able are going through this, then what about the disabled? Say amen. They are more pathetic in this last day. That is why we have to do our best. Where there is a will, there is always a way. We have to navigate our way. Say amen. I invited the disability community for a meeting last week, Wednesday. Myself, Pastor Stanley and Co. We sat with them. They, they, you know what they told us? They said, Reverend, we taught you people to have forgotten us. They said, everybody forgot about us. As if we are not part of the pandemic. They forgot about us. They don't care whether we are infected or not. It is only God that has kept us. But thank you for remembering us. Thank you for inviting us. They said, if there is any time we need the help, the day of help, it is now. It is now. So you and I, we are going to contribute. We are going to give. We are going to support. We will prepare ourselves. We will wear gloves, PPE, nose masks, face masks, face hats, face boots, anything. And we will be out there. Preaching the gospel. Showing them the love of Jesus. And God will protect us to do what we must do when the outpouring had come upon our lives. I have one of my friends. One of my friends is a bishop, very great man of God. He has a tall list of hundreds and hundreds of disabled people. When the pandemic rose, he said, so how are these people doing? Fortunately, they have all their phone numbers, hundreds of them. All their phone numbers. Every month, my friend would take offering. And send it to them by Momo. So a, a disabled person will be there. You will hear, bing, bing. Then Momo number has come. You have received 500 Ghana cities. And he's been giving them every month till date. And he told his elders, do this until the pandemic is over. Because they are also God's children. This is my friend. That's what he's been doing. And he has a toll. He has set up an office. He said, you, your job is to send money. To all these disabled, autistic children, mothers who are struggling with their children and everything. Help them. Send them money. So they receive offerings and they put it in that account and they are sending them. They said the disabled, the disability community that are on their call list, said they don't know what to do with themselves. They are with their ping ping and it comes on a particular day of the month. It doesn't miss. Say amen. We also have a mission. Day of help. At Independence Square. I called the minister for gender. I said, I want an appointment with you on Monday. I want to see you. So, Reverend, is it true? Say, yes. What for? I said, we are having a day of help. And I need your help for the day of help. Tomorrow I'm seeing her to plan it. I know some people will say, hey, whatever we have, we will find a way. We will find a way. Look at the way God has kept you until today. That's the way he will keep you sad to the end of the year. So you to risk something small. Come out of your cocoon. Come out of your shell. Come out of your house. Support. Contribute. Are you a nurse? A doctor? Come out. Let's all. Well, we wear anything we want to wear. We we'll hand sanitize. We we'll do washing. We we'll do anything. But let's also reach out with the love of Jesus to these people who have no help. Who have nobody. They are also God's children. May the Lord help you as you make up your mind. During the first service, I told them that take your normal offering on your right and take your day of help offering also on your left. Beginning from today, every Sunday, contribute. There's no amount that is too small or too big. 20 pesos, 1 CD, 50 pesos, 5 CDs, 10 CDs, 50 CDs, whatever. Everybody, make up your mind. 
and support. By November, we would have gathered a lot. We have projects, we have needs. This church, we have projects, we have needs, we have but we will not forget that there are also poor people out there who are looking up to Jesus Christ. Jesus is also looking up to us to fulfill our mandate. Are you in support of what I'm saying? And may the Lord bless you. This this year, this is truly our year of what? Recovery. You see, when the Lord gave us this thing, we didn't see the pandemic. The Lord knew how the year was going to be. That's why he said, this is your year. And from now till December, you will see what we call recovery. Everything you have lost, job losses, salary cut, you will not, God will give you more. God is about to shock it somebody. Say amen. Get ready for a shock. Get ready for a blessing. Get ready. So beloved, as we rise up to pray, let the Lord help you for you to experience the benefits of the outpouring. God bless you and I love you all.